saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven. We give uh, thanks and uh, glory unto God for another time to study His Word. And uh, the first three sessions we were laying a foundation so that uh, we may be able to delve deeply in these issues of gospel order and uh, church organization. And so we are going to look at some important things this afternoon as we build on the foundations that are uh, on the foundation that has been already laid. And uh, God is not a God, an author of confusion. We saw the need of uh, unity in diversity. And uh, we have looked at uh, the issue of uh, planting the churches, evangelism and planting the churches. Now, these things that we have looked at, they cannot be successful without a gospel order in church organization. And uh, we want to build on these things as uh, we continue. And so I'd like us to pray and then be able to start the session of this time and uh, I pray that uh, we listen and uh, we ask the Lord to give us a spirit of understanding so that uh, we may not live the same. So uh, shall we pray? Heavenly Father, once again we are in your presence. We want to learn of thee. We want to learn of thy will, Lord. As we open the scriptures and the inspiration, Lord, we pray the presence of Jesus Christ may be with us, Lord. As he is depicted walking among us the candlesticks in the book of Revelation, Lord, this may be one of the places that uh, he will be walking and working in our hearts. And so I pray that you may give us the right words and the right intonation and the correct words to speak to your children. What is needful for this Ma uh, moment. Help us not to mix our, our anecdotes in these discourses, but to speak truth in love, in humility, and uh, in meekness. And uh, may the name of Jesus Christ be lifted up, the glory of man be laid in dust. We pray in his name. Amen. Amen. Uh, some of you have uh, ever heard me speak about an identity crisis and uh, it is a wide topic that uh, we can spend weeks days and months talking about welcome brother felix good to see you uh it is something that we can spend a lot of time speaking about this issue of identity christ and identity theft because what the Seventh-day Adventist is suffering from is called an identity crisis, a theft of identity. What is an identity crisis? It is a people or a family or a person called to do something and they don't understand about it. It is a people, again, proclaiming to know what they ought to do when actually they don't know what they are supposed to do. This is a hard situation to be in, but it is the same situation that is called Laudition State, lukewarm, foolish virgins. This is a place where people have lost 
the meaning of their existence. This is an identity crisis. This is an identity theft amongst us. A people who are supposed to be doing something, but they're doing nothing, yet professing to be doing something. And so those people who have started, studied uh, the Adventist history, and I pray that we study these things. Uh, the problem, as I said in the morning, is that we were born Adventist. And so we are in a mood of relaxation that we have everything when we have nothing. And so because of this matter, instead of people studying and understanding how this movement was brought into existence, they have stopped at a certain point. And this, these are the things we want to study and restudy so that we may not be found wanting in the balance of the sanctuary. When this movement was brought into birth or rebirth again, God wanted it to finish the work in a manner that the other churches had been not able to finish the work. And uh, it was out of disappointment, it was out of uh, 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 battles, confrontations that this movement was back. And in 1860s, starting from 1861, the Lord started organizing the Seventh Day Adventist Church. This is Adventist history. And at last it was given a name in 1863, but there was a lot of opposition on what we call church organization. Having churches, having leadership, and having offices that were functional. And so it was a difficult time that the pioneers passed through. And they tried to come up with something. It functioned for a time, but in 1901, again, more light came to the prophet that there need to be a reorganization. And because the regular lines which had to do the work had failed to do the work, and she said that they had to be broken down like water vessels so that we may start again at the foundations of everything. Now, remember 1901 comes after 1888 when the Lord wanted to do something to this church from 1881, the Lord had been wanting to do something to this church. And so we have brother James White coming up with the chart on righteousness by faith where actually the law was at the center of the cross. But in 1880s, actually the Lord visits the prophet again and then gives the cross once again, but now Jesus Christ is at the eminence of the cross and not the law. And so comes the years 1885, 1886, and then 1887, and Wagner is seated in a calm meeting, and he don't know what is, has preoccupied his own mind. And then he sees, as if in a vision, Christ lifted up on the cross. And then Alonzo Trevor Jones is uh, raised to help uh, uh, Wagona to start preaching the message of righteousness by faith. And then we have the Ministerial Institute of 1888 and the General Conference of 1888 in session, Minneapolis, the famous conference. And then the message of righteousness by faith is brought to the conference. But because human machinery had taken place of the power, where Christ had to work, the message is rejected in the church by the leaders. The church actually didn't reject the message. There should be a clear uh, 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 giving of information about 1888. The church didn't reject the message of 1888. The leaders and the delegates who are gathered in Minneapolis, the main leading leaders could not carry the message back to the churches. One reason, they didn't, some of them, understand the message. And those who understood the message or those who got a glimpse of the message thought that actually the law was being done away and it was being replaced by something. And because people had been trained to look unto men, because of the kind of the structure that has been being put in place, exercising kingly power to tell people do this and tell people do that. The people failed to get the information that was to be given to the people. And so we need as a people to restudy again the history of Adventists. 
and see how the Lord raised this church and what he wants it to do again. And so in 1901, after Minneapolis conference fails, because humanity had been placed where divinity should be, the prophet says that we need a reorganization. We need to start on the right platform once again. 1902, then these changes picked a little bit, but again, they were left off. And now we have the church until today doesn't know or have a clue of what it should be doing. The church members have been trained to look at the pastors, to look at the elders, to look at the conference, and to look at these people who are at the head of the churches. And instead of going to the field to do the work and releasing the leaders to go to other unended fields to do the work, now, we are stuck with church members who should be breastfed instead of doing the work. And so we need to, organ uh, to uh, realize how organization works. But in the midst of gospel order and church organization, there have been extremes that actually are out of place. People pick here a quote and pick there a quote, bring them together out of context, and they say, now we are doing the work of the Lord. And people are running into the field, doing things which are actually maybe may seem right, but they are not right. Everyone wants to work the way they want to work. While on the other extreme, they are shunning gospel order, and on the other extreme, they are doing their own things. And so we want to look at the context of these uh, 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 quotes that talks about individuals working in the field and what church organization and gospel order is because there have been two extremes and they need to be balanced. And so uh, I'd like us to pray and ask the Lord to embrace truth on us to do the right thing at the right time. And so if you will, uh, I'll share my screen. And uh, go through some few things that uh, the Lord has put in our hearts. This, is, uh, this was written in 19, uh, uh, actually, this is a uh, uh, Laubra writing, John Norton Laubra. He started looking at these things in 1901 when the prophetess said that we need to reorganize and start afresh. And then it was published officially in 1907. And so between those five years, this pioneer was studying about gospel order, which actually was somehow not implemented until the time that we are living in right now. And God is waiting for a people who will complete reformation. There is this notion that reformation died with Martin Luther and Protestantism died with Martin Luther, but it has to continue until the end of the time. Now, therefore, you are no more strangers and foreigners but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord, in whom he also are built together for an habitation of God through the spirit. Ephesians chapter 2 verses 19 to 22. So Wagona, uh, I mean, uh, John Norton Laubra introduces the gospel order and church organization as a household of God. Now a household, what comprises a household? Maybe let me ask family people, what comprises of a household? Sometimes we may be here married and we don't know what's a household. Dickens, do you want me to call you a name? What is a household? <laughs> You know, we are here as leaders to go and disseminate. Listen, pause a moment. In 1888, the people who went to Minneapolis conference could not go to teach what they had had in their churches. We don't want to have another conference like 1888 here, where people can go back to their churches and they are asked to tell what they have learned. And they say, you know, I came to that place. This was this one was saying this and that one was saying that and I can't even put the pieces together. What is a household? That is a husband and wife. This is what makes up a household. 
Can two walk together if they are not agreed? That is not a household. So you may find that there is a building with a woman and a man professing to be married, but they are not a household. And this is what has happened to the church of God. Professing to be a household, yet they are not one flesh. There are deeper lessons to learn in the family that applies to the church. And if they are not happening in your family, you will never recognize what is church, gospel order, and church organization. And so uh, we saw when Pastor Alan Stamp was presenting that there is no way you can plant a church if you can't plant a family. If the church cannot begin in your own household, don't expect to plant a, 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 a church anyway. For what kind of a church will you be planning if you, are, uh, uh, you have been defeated to plan your own house? And so if a man and a woman will come together and not be one flesh, they cannot make a household, and that which they cannot make in their own houses, they cannot transfer in the field of God. And that is the reason, number one, why people who are at variance with their families should not be sent in the field to do our work. Now we have to be, get straighter than what we have been speaking from the morning. For what shall you teach those in the field when you can't teach it in, the, in your house? And so uh, uh, Laura starts by talking about a household. A household is a family that is knit together. And he continues to say, after the church has been fitly framed together, That is after it is properly organized. This is the book, The Church. It is uh, uh, the church, it is uh, organization, order, and discipline. After the church has been fitly framed together, that is after it is properly organized, each person feeling his or her appropriate place in the body, it is growth is assured by each, so following the Lord's counsel as it's as to retain the continued indwelling of his spirit. This growth is thus beautifully expressed from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplied according to the effectual working in the working in the measure of every part, make an increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. Ephesians 4:16. He says, Be kindly affectionate one toward another with brotherly love in honor, preferring one another. Romans 12:10. And then giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting yourself one to another in the fear of God. So when you are starting the gospel order in the church organization, the most important points to consider is preferring one to another. Preferring one to another, and then submitting yourself one to another in the fear of God. What is the fear of God? Is to depart from evil, Job 28, 28, to eschew evil. And so in the gospel order and church organization, you will see a people who are maturing in their spirituality, not being tossed about with winds of doctrine. And we saw that this comes in when people are counseling together. People are pressing together. People are having conferences to have upper room experience. Demeanor toward leaders. Having stated how all members of the church should care for each other, the apostle proceed to speak of their demeanor toward the leaders of the world. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourself unto the elder. Ye are all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. For God resisted the proud and giveth grace to the humble. Obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourself. For they watch for your souls as them that must give account, that they may do it with joy and not with grief. For that is unprofitable for you. Hebrews 13, 17. Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially they who labor in the world and doctrine. 1 Timothy 5, 17. To all the flock, Instruction is given, showing how to proceed in case faults appear in members of the flock. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such a, a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou be tempted. Why is it that people are not corrected when now they err? 
It is because the church or the leaders or the people involved have agendas or the people who are being corrected have developed an independent spirit. A spirit that cannot be canceled, a spirit that cannot submit to the leadership or to the flow of God. Not to be proud in position. And this is gospel order and church organization. The apostles seem to recognize the fact that when that deference and respect due to those who are really acting as the Lord's anointing, feeling responsible places in the church will be shown, there will be a liability on the part of such if self in them was not fully surrendered to God of becoming lifted up with pride as though they of themselves were superior to their brethren. To guard against this, they received caution of which the following assembles in all things showing thyself a pattern of what? Good works. Now, for the people who are in the field, can you show some good works? We have been saying that we are doing the work of the Lord. Where are the good works? How do you know that you are having good works? <laughs> How do you know as a leader or a gospel worker, you are showing good works? But they, these are not sermons. We are in a conference. <laughs> the problem is that we are can living, but we are not practicing can living. Because if we are practicing can living, such a question is an, is a, here we have an agricultural extension officer looking at me, who should be telling me an answer of uh, how do you know that you are producing good words? <laughs> The produce shows that you have you have good work. I cannot look, look at this guy and say Wycliffe is a good person. That is not how people are measured that they have good works. If this guy is an agriculturist, then I have to look at the farm what it is producing. But we go outside there, the field, and we want our names to be mentioned. But what we have left behind, what is it? So the people who are practicing gospel order, their produce should show of it in the church organization. They should leave behind churches who are mature in what they are doing. And so in all things showing the self a pattern of good works in what? Doctrine showing what? And corruptness, gravity. What is gravity? Huh? No, uh, I, I wonder, I won't comment on that. He's saying firmness, which is uh, good. If you say somebody has grabbed it, yes, it is firmness. Somebody has grabbed it. it means that uh, he have that strength to withstand what is happening. Sound speech that cannot be condemned, that he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say of you. Be thou an example to the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Take heed unto thyself and unto doctrine, continue in them, for in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. A late testimony says, he who is chosen to fill the office of elder is not because of this to become self-exalted. Let him remember that the office does not make the man, but that before angels, before man, he is to honor his office. Who are the greatest? The apostles saw that which one selected as elder, there will be a conflict of self-denial and self even among themselves, when personally accompanying Christ, there was a strife among them, which of them should be what? Accounted of greatest. And now we are trying to balance the gospel order and the two extremes. 
people put in offices and instead of exercising rulership or leadership on them, they are exercising kingly power. And then the flock or the gospel workers now retaliating against leadership and going into independent spirit instead of them coming back together and doing the necessary things and counseling together and knowing what should be done next. Even among themselves, there was strife who should be the greatest. So in the church after his ascension, there might be a desire for power with some of those chosen as overseers of the church. The first advice in genuine service to God is let him deny himself. We read of Christ's mission to earth when acting as our example that he made himself of what? No reputation and took upon him the form of a servant. So in gospel order, although we have leadership, there's nothing like there's no leadership in gospel order and organization. We have leadership, but the leadership should not do what? Exercise what? Kingly power. And instead of being a lord to those whom he's working for, he should actually take the position of a servant. And so there is nothing like working independently without an organization who doesn't have a leader. There must be a gospel order, there must be a leadership, but the leadership have not to exercise kingly power and those whom he is working with do not have to exercise independent spirit. And so we are told the apostle had a knowledge of the fate of Judas. Uh, uh, this is found in uh, Acts chapter 5, verse 36, and Deuteronomy uh, 1 John 1 9. Uh, they were boasting, or uh, this man, Judas, was boasting himself to be somebody. What had been seen in Jewish times was just as likely to develop from human hearts in general times. As Paul and Miletus met the elders from Ephesus, he said to them, I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. So I wrote unto the church, but Diot, uh, Ferris, uh, who loveth to have the preeminent among them, receiveth at not. It seems he took the liberty to withhold John's wholesome epistle from the church. Wherefore, if I come, I will remember his deeds, which he doeth, prating against us with malicious words and not content therewith, neither doth he himself receive the brethren and forbidden them that would and cast them out of the church. So we have here a leader who actually admonition was sent to, he will not relate it to the church and he will not receive those who had to come and minister there. But what was uh, Rephes doing? He was having, uh, uh, um, uh, having malicious words against the servants of the Lord. And so these things were uh, predicted uh, in the church of God and there are things that exist even today. In writing to the church in Thessalonica, Paul called their attention more fully to the manner in which this self-exaltation and love of power was to be developed in the apostles of the church. Speaking of Christ's second coming and events preceded, he said that they shall not come except there come a falling away first. And the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposed himself and exalted himself. Sometimes we talk about uh, the infallibility of the papacy. But do you know that the infallibility of the papacy hangs upon independent spirit? Who does the Pope counsel? Can you tell me? Who does the Pope counsel? Who advises the Pope? Huh? Who advises the Pope? The what? Cardinals. Are you sure? When he speaks ex cathedra, is he speaking for the cardinals? The cardinals have to follow what he has spoken. The spirit of self-independence is what actually drives the purpose. 
And so you may start speaking about the purpose in the Roman Catholic Church when you are practicing it in Seventh day Adventism. And so there must be a falling away. This falling away if is having popes amongst us. Why? The leadership is bad, and those who are not okay with the leadership also end us into the same spirit of independence. So the five steps of apostasy. In setting up his, this abomination that make it desolate, we see that five distinct steps were taken. One was the forming of a creed expressing their faith in man-made phrases instead of adhering to the word of the Lord. Two, making that man-made creed a test of fellowship and denouncing all as heretics who will not ascend to the exact wording of their creeds. Making the creed a rule by which all heretics must be tried. Many were thus declared sinners whose faith was more in harmony with the direct statements of the Bible than that of those who decreed against them. Constituting themselves a tribunal for the trial of heretics and excluding from their fellowship all who will not ascend to their creeds. Why do we have several independent ministers? Why are we having several independent ministers? They are independent. That is the, the thing. They are independent. Why? They have creeds. And if others will not adhere to those creeds, then they are not part of them. And so, at the end of the day, they do not consult each other and move as a unit, as one body. How does kindle a hatred in their own hearts against all who did not conform to their creed? They next invoke and obtain the aid of the civil power to torch and kill with sword, with hunger, with flame, and with beast. Just the way the purpose is started is the way the independent ministers are going around. Then appeared on the stage of action one class of professed Christian with a head over them, actually declaring that he was God on earth. That is how the purpose is started. With an independent spirit, then the creeds then the punishing and the excommunication of those who will not agree with them. And so there is one extreme where the leadership have taken the prerogative of God and standing in the place of God. And here we have workers or the flow now imitating the same spirit. And instead of trying to praise together, they also fragment into independent atoms. So is God against order? Let us try to look at this. Time is rushing. The course of the churches in circumscribing everything to just the tenor of their creeds led the mass of those who separated from them to look with disfavor on any word. Oh, you are attentively listening. Let us try to read together. The course of the churches in circumscribing everything to just the tenor of their creeds led the mass of those who separated from them to look with disfavor on anyone. So there was an organization. Do we agree that? What brought about this organization? Are we still alive? Creeds brought about this organization. And they'll continue to bring this organization until the end of the time. And even some of their teachers favored such a conclusion. The following from the pen of Geo Stores, one of the earnest Advent laborers, will serve as a sample of that teaching. Take care that you do not what? Seek to organize what? No church can be organized by man's invention, but what it becomes, Babylon, the moment it's done one. And that is the, the, the statements that people are running around. If you organize, you become Babylon. But uh, this organization was brought about by, by creeds. And so you find one person laboring there independently, an independent atom, another one laboring there as an independent atom. They don't want organization because they think that organization brings about Babylon. But that's not the truth. 
Disorganization was brought about because people had creeps. They left the Bible and they started bringing in elements that the people could not endure. The Lord organized his own church by the strong bond of love. This guy is saying, stronger than that uh, can not be made. And when such a bond will not hold together the professed followers of Christ, they cease to be followers and drop off from the body as matters of course. So Stoss is saying that we cannot organize. It is only Christ who can organize. But he is missing some points, an address of caution. An address signed by who? William Miller, Elon uh, uh, Galusha, uh, W.N. Whiting, Apollos Hale, and James uh, J.V. Himes cautioned against the danger of yielding to a spirit of revenge against the churches on account of their injustice towards us and of waging an indiscriminate warfare against all such organizations. This advice was given a few weeks after Elder Stowe's statement against any form of organization. So while I love the, how the Adventist church actually faced the storm, when some of the leaders in Adventist church were saying there's no organization, the others did not go after them to accuse them, to throw words at them, and to uh, uh, rebuke them. This is not what they did. This is not what William Miller, Ellen Galusha, Whiting, Apollo Hells, and J.V. Himes did. It seemed design of the Lord to hold the people from assuming too ultra ground on the subject of church order and organization. And Laura continues, while we recognize the hand of the Lord in bringing out a people by the second angel's message, free from the power of what? And placed in condition where they could search for and accept his truth, this liberty was not a permission to what? Run into anarchy and what? Confusion. It was just as true then that liberty did not mean license to what? Or confusion as in the days of the apostle, when it was said to the Galatians, brethren, we have been called unto liberty, only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. So just because people had creeds and they became Babylon and disorganized, it was not a license for everyone to practice an independent spirit. After the close of prophetic period, October 22, 1844, and until the Adventists should get an understanding of the real event to transpire at the end of the days, they were like what? Without a shepherd. Have you ever seen a sheep without a shepherd? A flock without a shepherd? Do you know what Laubra uh, uh, concludes the statement with? It could be said of them as in the olden what? There was no king in Israel, but every man did that which what are the independent ministries doing? What seems good and right in there? What are they? What does Laubra say they are? A sheep without what? Without gospel order and organization, this is a sheep without a shepherd. There's nothing like one sheep grazing there and another one grazing there without someone to look upon them. The situation after seventh month, 1844. Elder James White said of the situation in the autumn of 1844 and following, after the time passed, there was what? Great confusion. And the, why, why did we have great confusion? There was no order, there was sheep without what? A shepherd, there was no organization, there was no gospel order, everyone did as they wanted. So on the other hand, fanatism started and there was a lot of confusion. One person doing something there and another person doing something there. The things that we see happening around the world and this, the same spirit that has taken over USA is also taking over Kenya. 
while we should be pressing together and trying to finish work in this country, there's almost in every corner an independent ministry, one born sinners, another one this and another one that and another and they cannot sit in fact sister white says that there was confusion that they went in one village with a church over 50 people and not one of them agreed with each other what they were saying a church having over 50 people who does not agree even in one thing doesn't that sound like Kenya or USA or Australia, where actually we have a people saying they are Seventh day Adventists and they can't agree on one thing? Even the man of observing the Sabbath itself, they can't agree on it. And so, after the time passed, there was great confusion and the majority was strongly opposed to what? Any holding that it was inconsistent with what? Liberty of the the gospel. Miss White was always opposed to every form of fanaticism and early announced that some form of organization was necessary to prevent and correct confusion. Few at the present time can appreciate the firmness which was then required to maintain her position against the prevailing anarchy. So, in looking at the period of 1849, on one. The writer, that is John Norton Laubara, being privileged to hear the first angel's message in December 1843, witnessed to some extent the conflict between the churches and the Adventists. And having united with the latter, that is Adventist, by baptism in the spring of 1849, has a distinct recollection of the situation among that people from the time of his association with them up to the September 1852, when he heard the third angel's message and united with those of his faith. He says, let us read together, during what? The three and one half years of his connection with who? First day Adventists, he's preached the Advent word, doctrine as a body, they were opposed to any form of what? church organization no church records were kept so number one no church records were kept not even a list of what if a person was sincere in his faith and was baptized his name was considered enrolled in the lamb's book of life it being held that that was record enough during this period of three and one half years, no mention was made of needing what? Church what? Officers and no ordination of any kind took place except that one, that of one preacher who in 1851 urged that according to the New Testament plan, those going forth to preach and baptize should be ordained. To some of the leading ministers, he mentioned and urged his own ordination they reluctantly consented to it but instead of it is being a solemn and impressive ceremony before the body of believers the ministers waited until the congregation had left when one of the ministers offered a dry formal prayer there was no laying off of hands and no child was given this is the kind of confusion that existed do you see this confusion people say now i can just go and baptize because ordination is done by God. Do you hear such a statement? I can just go and officiate a wedding. I can only go and uh, uh, do uh, 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 the ordinance of foot washing and, uh, uh, and the giving of the emblems of the Lord's Supper. The greatest preacher after Jesus Christ, Paul himself, was ordained. Do you know that? Hands were laid on him as great as he is. Not that it was conferring on him any other new powers. No, it was gospel order and church organization. And he was ordained by the same people that opposed him by the In the first day, he was at variance with Peter and the others. But these are the same people that laid hands on him. When the Lord met him directly on the road to Damascus, he didn't tell him now go and start preaching and planning churches. He told him go to 
a house of certain and certain disciples. Not even a prominent man. He was not sent to Peter. Whom was he sent to? Ananias. Who is Ananias? Who knows Ananias in the Bible? No one. He's mentioned once in the book of Acts. And there he prayed to brother Paul and Paul received his eyes. And then they were separated and they went to do the work of God. So this kind of independent spirit that now you have read a few quotes there and there that you can go in the field and do the work. And then we have quotes like uh, that brother who went on a mission and there was no leader there to baptize. And then he was afraid to baptize. And then Sister White says that that thing of laying of hands on people to baptize is man-made thing. The brother could have baptized. Then people say, now, nah, if this brother was told to be to, to baptize, we apply statements that do not apply to us. Here is a, some, someone in a field where there is no ordained minister and people need something to be done. Why not him do the thing? But what does it cost for somebody to come from this place to other place to do some work? So that we may do things in a haphazard way. It cannot be so. And so, fearing of church organization, gospel order, and laying of hand, this preacher, what he did, he left people go. And because they were opposed to this, just said a formal prayer. Neither had that people any system of raising what? Money for the support of their what? Now, the leaders in this meeting, because we are looking at this thing practically, we are not having theoretical uh, 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 seminar here. Have you these things in place? Those that have independent ministries among us and have groups among us, do you have a gospel order somewhere? Do you have a church organization somewhere? Do you have means of getting funds? Do you counsel with each other to see the way forward? Neither had the people any system of raising money for the support of their work. If anyone felt disposed to give to the ministry, he gave to the minister direct. If special funds was taken to a particular minister, he received many gifts. Another might be just as efficient, perhaps more consecrated, but if retiring in his manner and diffident about pleading his own needs, he might be left to largely support himself by manual labor. I don't know if we understand these things. One preacher is so uh, popular amongst the people that he freely receives donations from the people. This is part of what we shall be looking at, what is called congregation. Congregational is not a bad thing, but there is part of congregational which is bad, where actually we have one minister over churches and instead of finances going to the store so that the other fields which are needed and the other ministers which are, have need should get supplied, the money comes to him directly and he is the one to choose whom he can give. He is over these churches. And instead of having a storehouse where actually things are distributed even, he is the one who is benefiting. And so the more people you have, the more tithes you receive. And the more richer you become. As we call to remember the former days of relaxed ideas of order, which prevail among the early Advent believers, it makes it clearer now why it required years of patient labor and prayerful study to develop and perfect what? The system of what? Order that now is non-existent in Seventh-day Adventism. It was there. It is not there anymore. Development of order. I have some 15 minutes and I'll open up for questions. That uh, we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slate of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive, but speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. 
from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplied, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body and the edifying of itself in love. Gospel order and church organization makes the body fit together, not being tossed about like a child. But we have remained in this state of infancy because people have run into fanatism. If the growth of the body of Christ, the church, is growth in all things, then in that growth, there will be seen what? No, 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 let, let us read together. Am I going too fast? To some, is it? Let me try to slow on this last point. If the growth of the body of Christ, the church, is a growth in? Then in that growth, there will be seen what? A system of order such as is essential for the harmonious development of what? Now, how many churches is Christ coming to pick on this earth? One church, is it? Divided or one? Huh? One, not divided. So what do we do with these fragments that are all over the world? It may be a matter of interest to note the introduction and practical working of the order and system, which in the providence of God have aided in the successful rise of the third angels. Now, why is it that we don't have a rising of the third angel's message? Karen. There is no order of system. There is confusion. Because if I, like, if I ask everyone in this room, God forbid, to tell me what is the third angel's message, I'll hear suggestions that do not feed the Bible. Should I try? What is the third angel's message? Should we start with Brian? It is so dangerous to sit near the bridge. <laughs> Brother, what is the third angel's message? What is the third angel's message? Elder Kimar, what is the third angel's message? Sami. Don't collapse. <laughs> Weekly, what is the third angel's message? Third angel's message is that the precious is for the people. You sound like Seventh day Adventist. But can we take that to another step? What makes it the third angel's message? During investigative judgment. That is what makes it the third angel's message. It is the last message to the world. And so this confusion can just be done away with if there is an order and a system where people are counseling together and pressing together and not introducing things which the brethren have not counseled together. But one person has something there, another one has something there, and another one has something there. And the Lord led the establishing of order. I am sure the Lord has wrote in the organization that has been perfected. And the fact that there are discouraging features in the work should not be thought a sufficient reason for what? Disorganization. If you see that uh, there is perplexity there and there is a perplexity there in the ministry or in the organization, the, the, the good step is not to disorganize, but to come together and cancel. 
Much light was given to us in reference to the organization of churches. And yet we had a hard battle to fight in perfecting what? But the victory was gained at last. And now shall the church be disorganized because of indifference, formality, and pride. Shall we go back to disorder because unconsecrated members of the church have placed upon the work the mold of man and sought to fashion the church to meet a popular standard? While running away from anarchy, should we be running into independent spirit and independent atoms? These two extremes, how can we bridge them? Back to the gospel order, back to the Bibles, back to the conferences, consulting with each other, back to having an upper room experience. The word perfect is used as applying to the system and plan of organization and not to perfection in the working with those plans. For it clearly states that the mold of man had been put upon the work, not because the system of order was what? Imperfect. So the system of order is not imperfect. But because man has been put at the helm and they are exercising their own power, organization and order seem something bad. But it is not bad. Organization and order is not bad. The people who are at the helm of these things, who have been put in the leadership, are the ones who have a problem. So instead of changing the system and order of working, what should we be doing? Removing the kingly power amongst us. And I'm so glad and I'll be looking at that, that the power in the Seventh-day Adventist church has been invested in the local church. An elder cannot assume leadership if the congregation does not want it. Do you know that? And so the Reformation starts where? At the GC. The Reformation starts at the local church, where everything has to be made straight. When everything is made straight in the local church, then in the field, in the union, in the conference, and the general conference, everything will be right. And so, we are told, lastly, in the next five minutes, in a testimony found in the General Conference Bulletin in January 29, 1892. The same writer says, who is Sister White? It is nearly 40 years since organization was introduced among us as a people. I was one of the number who had an experience in establishing it from the first. I know of the difficulties that had to be met, the evils it was designed to correct, and I have watched its influence in connection with the growth of the course. At an early stage in the work, God gave a special light from this point, and this light together with the lessons that experience has taught us should be carefully considered. Our members, our numbers increased. It was evident that without some form of organization, there will be great confusion, and the work could not be carried forward successively. Su su uh, successively to provide for the support of the ministry, for the carrying of the work in new fields, for protecting both the church and ministry from unworthy members, for holding church property, for the publication of the truth through the press, and for other objects, organization was indispensable. The church, it is organization, order, and discipline, page 92.3. And so God at last erected a structure and uh, we read, let, let us read together, let none entertain what? However, that we can with organization. It has cost us much study and many prayers for wisdom that we know God has answered to effect this structure. 
It has been built up by his direction through much sacrifice and conflict. Let none of our brethren be so deceived as to attempt to tear it down, for you will thus bring in of in a condition of things that you do not dream. In the name of the Lord, I declare to you that it is to stand, strengthened, established, and settled. So, from an published testimony of July 1894, we quote these words, now just now, as is the time when the parents of the last days are thickening around us, that we need wise men for counselors, not men who will feel it duty to stir up and create disorder, and who cannot possibly give wise counsel, but who can organize and arrange that every stirring up shall bring order out of confusion and rest and peace in obeying the word of the Lord. Let every man be found in his true place, ready to do some work for the master, according to his several ability. None should be left to drift to make a vast amount of trouble and confusion. Lastly, Satan is a disorganized. In testimony dated January 14, 1894, we read, oh, how Satan will rejoice to get in among the people and disorganize the work at a time when thorough organization is what? And will be the greatest power to keep out superior surprises and to refute claims not endorsed by the word of God. We want to hold the lines evenly that there shall be no breaking down of the system of regulation and what is regulation as we close? What is regulation? You see, if we have teachers among us and we can't define regulation, we have a problem. Yes, Tabi. Regulate from the word regulate. Things may not go to extremes or things may not be left to under. Regulate. You have your phones, you have smartphones, but you can't use them. When do you use them? You just Google regulate and you get a meaning. Huh? So there's nothing like somebody saying that I can work without regulation. You see that? But at the same time, we cannot have people sitting on seats and saying that I will regulate every movement you make. You hear me? There must be a balanced presentation of things. We do not want kingly power. At the other extreme, we do not want fanaticism. Everything must be in order. There must be a somebody to chair a meeting. There must be somebody to give some wise counsel. There must be somebody to advise how work should be done. But in this counseling and advising, there should be no kingly power. We are subject to the Lord and we receive instruction from him, guided by the word of God. And anything that is against the word of God shouldn't be accepted. He says, we, she says, we want to hold the lines evenly that there should be no breaking down of the system of regulation and order. In this way, license shall not be given to disorderly elements to control the work at this time. We are living in a time when order, system, and what? Unity of action are what? Most essential. And the truth must bind us together like strong cords in order that no distracted efforts may be witnessed among the workers. If disorderly manifestations appear, we must do what? Have discernment to distinguish the spurious from the genuine. 
Let no messages be proclaimed until they have borne a careful scrutiny in every jot and tittle. You can't scrutinize anything in independent spirit. The reason why men want to do things on their own and independently, they don't want to be told anything, even on any subject that they are preaching. And I'm, I'm glad that uh, Pastor Allen Stamp talks about men who are married, going away from their wives for so long. Brother Zado, <laughs> I got you. And Sister Doreen is here, so I have just inflamed fire. <laughs> no going out three months and Bates is there alone at home. First of all, establish church in your own what? House. You have a church in your own house. You are three now. And the reason you can avoid such is to train up more people. It will be better to collect a lot of money, bring people in your house, train them to be evangelists while they are still this single and send them to the field and watch over your family. But we thank the Lord. That is not what has been happening. We are trying to regulate everything. Is it true, Sister Doreen? Yeah, I know you cannot say no. No, no woman uh, goes against the husband in public. I, I like that. You just accept even things if they are wrong. So we want gospel order. We want organization. We want men who can rule over their houses well, and then they can be sent in the field. For if you cannot rule well your house, how can you go to the field and do our work? And by the way, uh, we say that we shall uncover these things as the week goes on. Do you know why there's a lot of divorce in USA, in, in Kenya, in separation all over? Men who cannot rule their own houses well, going into the field to do their work. What kind of spirit do they impart on the congregation they are going to minister to? Divorce and separation. And so unless we have a system in check, a system in place, a place where somebody is responsible, tell me those who are in independent ministries and those who are of independent spirit, who disciplines you when you do wrong? Huh? Who disciplines you? God. By sending some poverty in your house. Hmm? No one. Is it true? You are answerable to no one. And so whether people say this or say that, will say they are jealousy of me working in the field. That is out of order. You must be somebody who is under discipline. There is nothing like you can work independently and you are answerable to God. There is nothing like that. You are answerable to God. You are answerable to fellow human beings. As long as you are still on this earth, whatever you will do hurts another man. God is in heaven doing his own things and guiding his church. You are here on earth and answerable to fellow human beings. That's why we have courts. Have you ever seen somebody drunk and driving and just steps on somebody and says that I'm not answerable to anyone? You are, an un you are answerable to somebody. And so this self-independent spirit means that you don't want to be disciplined by anyone. Well, there should be church discipline when people go wrong. But self-sufficiency, running as independent atoms. So the two extremes have to be checked. Here we have a people who are exercising kingly power, and here we have a people who are not satisfied with how things are running, and then they decide to be independent atoms. But now the balance has to be brought back home, and things start at the grassroots. And this can only be done by church order and organization. And God willing, we shall continue exploring this thing of church order and organization. I pray that the Lord will animate your minds. Uh, I pray that uh, the Lord will be with us as uh, we continue studying his word. And he will bring freshness, vitality, vigor. We are told that at such a meeting, he is willing to outpour his Holy Spirit, even the latter day. Let it, let it not be found among us this statement that is 
spoken that it may be falling amongst us, but you are not receiving it. May the good Lord be with us. Amen. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we see around the world the forces of evil are uniting to do the last grand work of deceiving the people. We are praying in a special sense that also you may marshal together your forces, that they may be one like soldiers in a compact. They may be able to withstand these powers of darkness. And amidst the deceptions and the darkness that is in the world, we may have a people who are true light and the kings, the Gentiles, those who are in darkness may come unto the light. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for this week. We are praying that uh, you may give us a good weather. You may give us a good listening. And Lord, you may ordain our lips so that the words that come from them may be consecrated. Bread fresh from heaven being fed unto thy flock. There are so many truths contained in thy word, Lord, but what we need now is practical religion found by the cleansing blood of thy son. And so we appreciate that Christ is able to do for us that which we cannot do for ourselves. This is the heart of the message, righteousness by faith. And Lord, it cannot be perfected when there is a lot of confusion amongst us. Thank you because we want us to learn and be able to disseminate the same information to others that, Lord, we may walk as a team. Your will be done, Lord, amongst us. And thank you for giving us a privilege to study your word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.